know, teaching you boys to get out there in the back of the room and do a talk. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome all of you who are here today. We appreciate the audience. Uh, I did want to make a few uh, housekeeping remarks before we start. One is that we have received a lot of emails, information, <laughs> proposed plat, plot signs and all of that from all three of the sites that are still under consideration. We appreciate that very much. They've been, they are extremely helpful uh, and the, it's, it's nice to know that whatever site, at, if we pick one of these three sites, that there is major community support in the surrounding area for it. Uh, and uh, part of that we may talk a little bit about today, but there has been uh, major uh, support for the three sites. The second thing I would like to remind people is that there is still, I think, a misunderstanding of the vision that we have for this park. This whole process was started, uh, gosh, three or four years ago now. It's not new. Uh, and it was designed to try to build within the central Arkansas region a, a resource for getting university research into the marketplace and create new companies and new ideas to get out there. Uh, that is what a research park is. It's not a question necessarily of inviting new companies in that are already in existence, that, although some of that will happen, you think. But it's really designed to try to get the, the research dollars that are now being spent in central Arkansas into the public and with new e economic activity for central Arkansas. Uh, the success of these parks does vary from site to site and it varies from town to town. Some of them have been very successful, some of them have not. Uh, we, we hope on the, at the next meeting what I'd like to do is to bring in a couple of people from very successful ones. Interestingly enough, one of them will be from Northwest Arkansas. Uh, the university system, the university uh, district up there now has a functioning tech park and incubator which is being extremely successful. We have in Central Arkansas, we are now spending upwards of 200 to 250 million dollars in research. The question is, how do we capture that? Uh, the, the UAMS has been very successful with their BioVentures, which is a, an incubator, but they are now, they don't have space to move those companies from the incubator to a commercialization site. So we're, what we're trying to do is to build a, a facility that will allow that kind of growth within central Arkansas and clearly since the city is a partner within the city of Little Rock. Uh, that kind of a park requires certain kinds of location and interaction with the universities that is not necessarily tied to a business park. So I'd like for people to keep all of that in mind as we go through the discussions today uh, about how this thing has to proceed. Uh, we're going to look at all of the sites today. We're going to have a presentation from the engineering firm. Uh, I think, I think in, in some ways the board is, is somewhat disappointed with the engineering report for two reasons. One was we had hoped that it might say that one of these could be eliminated or two of them could be eliminated and the board will have an easier decision to make. Unfortunately, they don't say that. Uh, they give us what the pros and cons of the sites are, but they do not eliminate, frankly, any of the sites at this point in time. Uh, so we're going to hear from the, uh, the engineering firm, and we're going to allow the people who are the advocates for those sites to take about five minutes to respond to the engineering report, and we'll take five minutes for questions back and forth between those groups and the board. Uh, the other thing is that we have on the agenda today public comments, but you notice it's sort of late in the day. Uh, we have a lot on the agenda today, so whether we'll get down to public comments or not, I'm not sure, because it may be that we run out of time before we get to that item on the agenda. Uh, 
that being the case, some of us are willing to stay as long as you like to answer questions. That's a different question already. But we have heard from enormous numbers of people at this point. We have lots of advocates for all three of the sites. So what we're trying to do today is to hear the engineering report, try to get as many of our questions answered as we can, uh, so that we're in a position to begin to make some final decisions. Uh, so just that is just background information for the meeting today. Uh, the second thing is uh, a uh, uh, approval of the minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve? Now they've all been circulated to everybody. So moved. Do I have a second? Sir. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, minutes are, are uh, approved as passed out. Madam Chair, you may want to also introduce our brand newest member. I'm going to do that next. Uh, I ought to pass out to the board. Uh, we have um, the, the board in its original meeting drew straws because the terms are five years, but to be sure that we had a uh, board that was staggered, everybody drew a straw and ended up with a term. So what I'm going to do is to pass out to the board members uh, the terms and uh, uh, people on the board. There will, and I'll read them to the to the audience, and there will be copies of them up here for those who would like to see them later. We'll just leave them. Uh, did you get out of Okay. Uh, these are the terms as of January the first, 2013. My own uh, term as chair has one more year to run. I drew a two-year term. This is the second year of that term. The vice chairman, uh, Mr. Eddie Drilly, uh, has three years remaining on his term. Uh, the secretary, Mr. Jay Cheshire, was reappointed. He was the one who drew the short straw of one year and hoped that that would be the end, but it's not because he's been reappointed by the owners to another five-year term. Uh, Mr. Dixon Flake, who has four years left, Mr. Bob Johnson, who has four years left, and I do want to, and Mr. C.J. Duvall, who has two years, and then I want to introduce Dr. Thomas Butler. Is it Mr. Thomas Butler? Okay. Uh, oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Butler from UAMS, who is uh, being appointed to replace Mike Douglas. Mike Douglas, as many of you know, has retired and moved to Texas. And uh, the board is, is uh, that's, that's a loss because Mike had put a lot of time and effort into this program and had a lot of knowledge and background for it. But Tom, we're delighted that you're there. So he is replacing uh, Michael, so he has three years. The remainder of Michael's term is three years. So that's the makeup of the board. And uh, like I say, there are copies of this up here in front if anybody wants it. But I thought that that would clarify who's on first and where it goes from here. Okay. Madam Chair, before you proceed with That's the fine. agenda. I'm going to ask if there's any other issues that want to be brought up by the board members. Well, in your introduction, um, I was taking notes. You, okay. were, you were talking about um, whether or not existing companies or incubators would be invited to participate. Not incubators. Well, this is why I'm asking the question. I want to get clarification. So, a tech park will not have any companies that, that invited to the table that could be technology in nature. No, sir, if they, that's not, if, please, that is well, not what I said. Okay. May I clarify what I'm, if I said that, I misspoke. Let me no, say what I meant. Right, that's all I want, clarification. What I meant was that the original program intent was to provide a mechanism for moving our incubator companies and startups into an opportunity for commercial development. So that the original, that the major purpose, although that will be a purpose, but the major purpose is not to invite business companies to join the park, although certainly you will do that, but the major emphasis is on generating new activity and new economic development in Central Arkansas. So you mentioned BioVentures. If there's a company located in the BioVentures area right. when they could move from BioVentures into the tech park? Absolutely, and in fact, that's one of the places that needs that kind of space as we speak, if, because as I understand from Mike, he assigned the last square foot he had at UAMS about a month ago. 
Second question, if a large pharmaceutical company wanted to participate as a private investor in the tech park, would we allow that? I would assume If they we moved would. here from California or New Jersey? Sure. Great. Particularly if they would partner with us on the startups. Great. Because you can use them to help you with that. Super. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay, any, any, is, that, is that satisfactory, CJ? That's, that's helpful. Okay. Great. Any other comments or questions from other board members before we get off the ground with housekeeping and that sort of thing? If not, I'm going to ask Dixon to give us a financial report. Chairman, board members, you have the financial report in your pockets. There, there's no financial activity uh, in the last month. We've incurred obligations. Uh, certainly for the engineering work, but uh, we have not yet been invoiced and there was no, it, it looks, except for uh, the posting of the, the final uh, sponsor contributions, uh, there's been no financial activity. Okay. Question about financial activity. If not, I would like to ask our representative from uh, uh, Could I make a motion to approve the financial? Oh, yeah. Second. Second. I always forget to do that. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> and some people think that it really, you need really to do that. Be sure to say so in a minute. Uh, if the Kraft and Tall representatives will uh, come forward and it's all yours. You, you've been okay. before us before. I've been before you before. You <laughs> uh, Tell them who you are. Okay, you, you bet. Uh, your background. Start, start from scratch here. Uh, my name is Jerry Kelso. I'm with Craft and Cole uh, Engineering Firm, uh, located here in Little Rock. Uh, we were originally given the task, if you remember, oh, several months ago when we looked at three potential sites in detail uh, for locations that were really south of 630 and uh, north of ULR. Uh, those particular sites, uh, again, we looked at those in a lot more detail, uh, did uh, conceptual plans that we spent much more time on, uh, did engineering analysis and cost estimates on what it would take to develop each of those sites. The criteria that we used in those three sites uh, as it relates to the tech park and what the ultimate goal was, was um, looking at a certain number of buildings, square footage, and parking as it related, and how that site would be developed. The criteria set forth at that particular time was an ultimate development of a million square foot of, uh, of office or, or buildings uh, with structured parking and surface parking. Surface parking about 20%. Structure parking about 80%. Um, in developing that, the criteria was, was set forth with uh, pretty much 10 buildings, 100,000 square foot per building. These were four story buildings, and uh, again, the adjacent parking <coughs> facilities. So the authority or board uh, gave us the charge to analyze three more sites. Um, we just want you to take a quick cursor look at these and just see how those sites can be developed using that same criteria and how it would lay out and things of that nature. So that's what we did. Okay? And uh, keep in mind, I go through these different site plans. This is just a rough draft. Again, the ones that you've seen before, we spent a lot more time analyzing those, doing grading plans, the utility layouts and stuff. These are just a quick first flush on how it potentially could be developed. So with that, boom. Okay, so this is the first site. We'll call this one site number two. Uh, this is over there close to the library. Uh, here is 9th Street. Here would be 4th Street. Here would be I-30 at this location. So this particular site, um, Approximately 30 usable acres was, was the boundaries that were given to us. We did not establish those boundaries. It was close to what we've given. Um, this doesn't show up real well, but uh, here's the Woodruff House. One of the ideas was maybe to incorporate that. It's a, it's, it's a historic house. 
uh, we felt like, obviously, we just talked about the types of buildings and stuff that we used in our original criteria, so we didn't feel like we needed to include that with the overall property. Again, as you see here, um, you know, 10, uh, basically we got nine buildings. This is a larger building. Again, the, the intent was to get a million square foot and a million square foot fit on this piece of property. And that's what we did. Um, main entry, 6th Street. Uh, again, this is a possible doable project. Obviously, we've got a different type of building than the rest of them. Um, again, 20% surface parking, 8% structure parking. So, um, one thing that we were trying to do and, and, and look as we looked at the other sites is you know, you're creating a campus type atmosphere. So right now with the traffic that uses uh, 6th Street down the center, uh, we want to make sure we got a good route around the site for truck traffic and crew traffic and things of that nature. So again, uh, just how that can function and how that can work. Um, so that's that side. Uh, some of the other criteria we were looking at was the uh, total square footage of existing structures that would have to be demoed. Um, and, uh, and those were in the report, uh, about 260,000 square foot. Um, and again, what we're trying to do is uh, Docs Consulting had a letter that they wrote up on each of these different sites and we we're just trying to answer those questions. So that's that one. Okay, this is the uh, site at Asher and University. Um, University here, I'm sorry, University here, Asher here. Uh, this particular site, there's a lot of property that's available out there, but a lot of the property is in Flood Way. Flood Way is property that you can't feel. Everything you see inside the blue line here is Flood Way. So, again, where the existing mall is, the old theater, um, this area here. Um, again, those buildings would be demoting and uh, six buildings on this side, four buildings on that side. Uh, the challenge in this particular side is, hey, you connect two pieces. Now you don't have a continuous piece of property. Um, you know, Mary had mentioned, you know, can you eliminate a site? Well, you could possibly eliminate this one because you don't have a contiguous piece of property. Uh, again, going back to that same criteria as we talked about, a million square foot uh, ultimate building. So uh, again, uh, this particular site on, on how it would be developed, possible street connection through here, we would have to cross the floodway in that location. Uh, floodway requires certain permits <coughs> environmentally and through FEMA, uh, and those are outlined in the report. So again, 22.27 usable acres on this side, 18.97 usable acres on this side. That is property outside of the floodway. That's how we came up with those numbers. Um, so again, what you're seeing is that you know 30 to 40 acres is what you need. So let's go to the next site. Okay, this particular site, the John Barrel site, um, it's a, a pretty piece of property. Uh, there's no existing structures, no houses on it at this point. Um, it's got uh, some uh, drainage area that runs through it. You can see here, you could make a nice water quality feature in the middle of it. Um, the issue with this side is it's, it's less than 30 acres, and we do have some drainage challenges in the middle. However, that could be nice aesthetics, it could work out fine. The problem we get into is we can't fit all the buildings on this side. You would need more property to do that, or you'd have to go vertical. Vertical with your buildings, vertical with your structures. Um, so again, this particular side, how it would be laid out, you know, loop around it. Uh, we've got uh, we got eight buildings to fit, um, but again, if you're going to get ten buildings that are 100,000 square foot, two of the buildings have to go vertical. So uh, that's just a quick blush on, on looking at the different sites and uh, and uh, what we were charged to do at this point. Again, very conceptual site plans on how. <coughs> You know, using the same criteria on what it would fit on the side. So um, that's about it. Okay. Um, you've been where that 
the board does not envision that you would build all of these buildings <coughs> up front. But what we want to do is to get enough property that we could build out to that over time. Uh, so it's, it's really important to get at least part of that 30 acres or so if we can. Uh, so uh, I think what we will do is ask those people who came prepared to talk to the site number two on Collins Street to uh, come forward and do that. And I, our friend is back there. I saw him when he came in. How are you, sir? Thank you, Chairman Good. <coughs> Members of the board, I'm Rat Tucker with the Tucker Real Estate. We're the uh, company that's representing the downtown site. Uh, we're very excited that your consultant included us along the finals. And uh, we survived the first cut. Now there are only three left. We appreciate the fact that you all are con continuing to consider the downtown site. As you know, and the chairman mentioned earlier, we have a lot of strong support for it. We uh, picked up a nice endorsement from Arkansas Times over the weekend. Thank you, Leslie. And uh, if you saw the morning's uh, Arkansas Democrat Gazette, they have endorsed the downtown site as well. Uh, we don't have any great quarrel with the engineer's report. Uh, I'll offer a few comments. Uh, the Woodruff House is a very special place. And, uh, it is rooted in the history of Little Rock. We believe because of the proximity that it will, it will benefit from the tech park being across the street, even if you all elect not to include it. Uh, we cite as an example the, the old Choctaw Station on the Clinton campus where they saved it uh, next to the very contemporary Clinton Library and just made it part of the campus. Our dream would be that you all might consider that, but again, that's your call, and uh, uh, we think it'll benefit just from being nearby. So uh, your engineer says really doesn't fit the criteria for the park, we're okay with that. The second thing is uh, the uh, engineer's suggestion that you route traffic around it and uh, eliminate all the, the city grid that's already in place. I think that's an interesting concept. I think some planners might question that, but again, I know you're not here today to decide that. Uh, and then finally, on the demolition, I uh, requested from Jerry uh, Monday, uh, I want to double check his numbers on 260,000 square feet. Uh, I, we did think that bid was a little high, so we went and obtained the bid of, of $3 a square foot to uh, demolish the buildings, which is some 40% less than, than his estimate. So I did want to share that with you. And other than that, uh, we're fine with the report, and I'd be happy to answer okay. any questions. Okay, excellent. Uh, Pete, members of the board, have questions? Yeah, fine. Uh, Mr. Tucker, let me ask a question. Uh, relative to uh, the 63030 uh, interchange. Do, do you know, is, is in, has there been a conversation with the highway department about what may be, what very well could be taking place there with regard to adding lanes on, on 30 or manipulating that interchange in any way and how that might help this site or hinder this site? We have not taken that step. We'd be delighted to do so. I think it would be something worth exploring. I understand, and I don't know that the information is correct or not, but I'm, I'm hearing that there could be some manipulation. 30, maybe adding a lane, doing some things out there. I have heard that. We'll, we'll explore that. It, it, it might make your site more marketable. It could take away from it. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll explore that report to the chair. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Brent, what do you think uh, about your cost estimates? Do you think they're good, bad, uh, uh, or uh, how accurate? Do you, I'm not asking you because you have, we're not to the stage right. of going down and negotiating with the owners. I understand that. But how accurate do you think the uh, estimates that you all gave uh, for uh, the whole piece of property uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a little over $10 million? We, we think it's a, a good estimate. Okay. We think with, through negotiation you might be able to bring that down. So. Okay. But I, I think it's a fair, okay. fair estimate of the value. So the land is is about ten, and then we 
if you uh, if the um, demo demo numbers are correct, one's looking at about twelve million dollars to get a green field ready to go. And I, I would say that our demo costs are conservative. What we were trying to do is, is, is again, we want to try to compare apples to apples on all these sites we looked at. So that demo number is the same that we used. Okay, so at least they're money. comparable. That's correct. Well, Chairman, I, 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 I confess that you could obtain the whole site, including the demolition for the $10 million. That's it. Okay, fair enough. Any other questions from members of the board? That needs clarifying. One, there is one issue, and it's a major issue, of, actually for two of these sites uh, particularly, and that has to do with the environmental issues. We did not ask the engineering firm to do that because that's a time-consuming and costly uh, expedition. <laughs> so we didn't ask them to do that. But this is a brownfield site, and there's going to be issues with respect to environmental issues, uh, and there will be some of that problem with the Asher Avenue site, particularly that piece that the shopping center is on. Uh, it does not have, the shopping center has the advantage that it does not have industrial, long-term industrial inhabitants there, but one will have to check that out when we just have not done it. I'm thinking the city could be very helpful with the grant to help pay for that. That's an interesting possibility. Okay. Madam Chairman, yeah. and just and one answer to uh, uh, Bob's point about the, the uh, uh, expansion of the interstate system. I did talk to the chief of the uh, design at the State Highway Department to inquire about that with respect to uh, I-30, particularly as it affects this site. And, and of course they are they are planning to add a lane uh, in, in each direction and they have uh, other requirements on the corridor uh, outside the traffic lanes that they'll be adding as well. They will be expanding the right of way. It should not, it, it shouldn't take from this site. It would be whatever happens during the construction period. Um, and it, that, that affects it and you know their plan was to uh, follow the same policy that's being followed at I 630 I 430 to they'll there will be disruption and and, and re, uh, realignment of the entrances and exits during the construction phase but traffic will be maintained uh, and with the exits too. Uh, so uh, it, it's definitely in the plans, it's, it's definitely in, going to be included in this 10 year program that the state uh, just had approved. So if they're adding a lane, that, I mean, where does that push it toward the, toward the hotel? We're talking about, we're, we're taking up more, more area uh, off of 30. It will it will is, it will take property from those owners fronting on 30. Okay. Okay. Chairman, let me also mention that really the easiest access to this site for UALR, UAMS, and Children's Hospital is at the east end of I-630, where you take the 15th Street exit and then College Street leads right to the site. No traffic lights either way. And, uh, and that, that's going to be the quickest, quickest, easiest way to navigate to the, to the three campuses. <coughs> that's the back of the site, isn't it? That's yeah. the easternmost boundary. Right, probably that's the other southeast yeah. boundary. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? CJ, anything? It's not a question as much as a comment. Oh. That the, then the that's open, fair. <laughs> then, then the then one of the key things to investigate will be to get the highway plan. Yeah, I think that that's probably available because I think they've made a decision. But I have no idea what their timing is on that. I don't think it's tomorrow. 
Well, it's, it has to be within the 10 year period. It's, oh, it's, 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 yeah. oh, that project that, is approved. Oh, it's in that 10 year. Okay. Yeah, so it will be within that. So we should time. be able to get some good information pretty quickly because they've already done some. Okay. Some work on it. Okay. And recall also that you have great access to the central business district on third, fourth, sixth, and ninth. Mm -hmm. Good connection. Right. Right. Could I ask a, sure. a couple of quick questions? One, uh, there, there's a property owner that didn't want to, per, to to sell the property but make it available for development, and that was six acres. Is that the the highlighted yellow area? If I remember. Okay. And then secondly, the um, public streets and right of ways, alleyways, I think is what it was that is effectively 10 acres of the 30 that's, okay. that's currently nothing on it except for a street or an alley or whatever. Okay. Um, and, and the reason why I think the highway part of this is important, we also have on the opposite end of 6th Street the, the So Falcon Jet Project. And part of the uh, work that we've done in that area with the city is expanding that corridor for ingress-egress. And so while I, I can appreciate a planner not wanting to possibly reroute 6th Street, it may, it, that might make a lot of sense. And having those conversations now, if, if, if that becomes a possibility, with the highway department to align their ingress-egress points to that 9th Street area would, would make a whole lot of sense. So I, I agree with CJ. If, it, there, there needs to be some pretty quick conversations with some folks to see how all those stars would align because right now you've got about 2,000 folks at the So Falcon Jet coming back and forth every day, much less the truck traffic and all of that. And, uh, and so th those are just some further research right. aspects that need to be taking place. Uh, Rick, can I ask what the, uh, the things in yellow that the Hastings family, uh, they don't want to sell, but they'd like to uh, maybe even support a uh, a spec building, as I understood it. Yes. Um, does that mean they want to maintain control of the property? Uh, yes, it That's does. That's a problem. Yes, it does. Yes, they do. Um, I don't know how you, I don't know how you manage that. But you, you don't Some have of to, you guys will have to help me out. You won't have to spend the money to buy their property or tear down their buildings. They'll yes, do that, you also, that for you. You also don't have the right to tell them what you want to build on it either. <laughs> yeah, they're, but they, they are open to that. Okay. And I think further discussion. Yeah, we'd have to have some discussion with them over that because that's a big piece of this property, big, a big slice of it. What's their objective to sell? They're long-time property owners. They're supportive of the tech park at this <laughs> location, and that's their position at this time. Okay. Now, there's also a couple of small ones, uh, the green ones, that you don't have any um, response yet from the owners. Is that right? That's, that's correct. But they're, uh, they're, they're much smaller than the Hastings business. But, okay. We thought maybe we could pick up Mr. Husband's property. Um, Who's that? You need to get the wrong husband. <laughs> okay, let's not go there. We've yeah. got enough problems with the piece of property we've got. Okay. We don't want to pick a fight. Huh? No, I say let's not go there. We've got enough problems with what we're trying to do now. Okay, any other questions of uh, with respect to um, site number two? If not, uh, who is going to speak for site number eight? Asher. <coughs> Hank, how are you today? I'm great. Good, how are you? Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Good. Ron Copeland is here also to speak for this site as a member of the University District, and I had um, asked Dennis Ford and Mark Johnson from FTN that are in the audience as well to be available to us to address the questions about weapons. If I could start off by saying uh, thanks on behalf of property owners that we have worked with at the southeast corner of Asher and University, of course, it's currently went all the way up to University and then it stays an Asher Avenue address as you go east in front of the University. Uh, from your research that you shared with us as we started this process, uh, we learned that 
Uh, the success of tech, tech parks in many cases are due to their connectivity to research institutions, and we think that being a neighbor to UALR as one of the participants in this process uh, enhances our site. And I know there's been discussion about relative distance to uh, the other members of the, of the consortium, and I would just say that what we thought we were putting together here for your review is a combination of a very urban site that has an opportunity for greenscape and, and protection of wetlands that you could be in control over that would make a significant difference to this neighborhood. It would make a significant difference if properly designed and uh, if you took advantage of those natural wetlands areas, uh, whether it be the Audubon Society, the Nature Conservancy, or other partners that would like to see this process happening here so that this institution, this research park, could actually be a catalyst for further development of Bush Creek and other areas. So we don't take that point lightly, especially when it comes to the quality of a place to work. And that's what we do. We, we provide places for people throughout the state of Arkansas as an organization on where they work. So the assemblage of this track has not been easy, uh, and it's a moving target. But I would say to you today that if you just focus on what's west, uh, on, the, on the very western quadrant of what you call your western parcel, Jerry described it as a 22.2 acre parcel, and that's accurate. With the addition of UALR's recent uh, notification to us that if it's significant to you, they would talk to you about adding three and a half acres on the eastern edge of that that is adjoining to the east of where the shopping center is. And I think I mentioned to those of you that were on the tour that uh, unbeknownst to this process, UALR had acquired that recently as a buffer to the apartments that are there. And that's a fairly significant piece of property when you look at it in relationship to the frontage on Asher Avenue. It's a particularly important one here because that's the in, that's the only possible entry off of that. Uh, yes, ma'am. I think it does enhance that yeah. uh, significantly. In addition to that, and I will defer to Dennis and Mark to to discuss with you and Jerry the wetlands issues. But he believes, without paraphrasing, that uh, with the proper permits, the floodplain could be um, about 10 acres of that could be um, realistically uh, raised to a point where it could be useful property, and that may enhance. The, the cost of connectivity relative to the roadways. And then for your, your future expansion, if you went from the west to the east, is that my time limit? <laughs> 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 oh, well, that five minutes really <laughs> You have the good old days, you have the good old days factor that roots the 9.7 acres that's there, and that is an industrial application. Uh, and much like Red Tucker said, without um, questioning Jerry's estimates, because I know we had to do this in a rather quick way, we think demolition for this site could probably be done for less than the five dollars a square foot. But candidly, I don't have a, a confirmed bid to, to receive that. But I would say to you that that we would try to help Jerry and you come to some competitive bidding. And there's a there's a couple of people by the name of Patton and Allman that are in that business that we think pretty aggressive and hit the work. Uh, so I, I, I want to speak to that. I want to make sure you know that the three and a half acres is open for discussion in UALR. I want you to know that the wetlands area to us is a benefit. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an obstacle to your development. But once you're there, and once you have the beauty of Bush Creek and all of that green space there as part of the park, it will be an amenity to you. And then, and then most importantly to us, is the connectivity to a research institution. And we think that's pretty important. Uh, may I ask uh, Dennis? Can I ask just one yes, question please. before you do? Can you point out on that map where the playing fields, uh, ULR's playing fields are? Yes, Ron, well, I'll let you do that, and then I'll show you an aerial I don't, I think I still have not gotten this site totally under control. Yeah. Of what the, this aerial probably helps you see where that is in relationship to the wetlands area. This uh, UALR track and field complex is in here. The apartments are in here, and the three and a half acre track is right in here. Yeah. Right. While this looks very disjointed, 
what's filling this up is UALR is already on the south side of Asher. And of course, the, tech, the literature on tech parks that I've read emphasizes the value of integrating tech park development in with, with housing and other types of development. So we, you know, this, this looks pretty extreme here, but if you fill in what's actually there, it's very complicated. And once again, where are the, the playing fields? Right here. Okay. You can see. Yeah, yeah, okay, I got you. Right. Here. So this, this shaded area, is that the three and a half acres? That yes, the gray, uh, uh, this was in our slide presentation in, uh, in November. Yeah. But, so you see 1A and 1B, so 1B is the shaded area. Okay. <clears throat> So, Dr. Good, if we may, could we address the wet yeah. issue today? It's an expert. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. What, what Jerry said in his report is, is true in the majority of the cases that you really cannot develop in the floodway that requires all kinds of different permits and takes a lot of time. This is really a very, very special case down here because we have what we call a political floodway. And in the city of Little Rock calls this area the bathtub area because it behaves just like a bathtub. When it rains, it fills up and then it slowly decreases and everything. So what they allow you to do in this area is offset volumes with volumes so that you're allowed to develop in that area if you can find volumes of, of, uh, of water to move out of that area. Several years ago on the Coleman property just south of where the uh, shopping center is, they uh, excavated about a 15 area, acre area about eight feet deep. That volume is available to fill somewhere within the bathtub area. All that requires is permission from the city of Little Rock. It's something where you submit the volumes to the city, they look at it, they approve it. So it would be very easy to fill 10 acres of land, maybe to 10 feet deep or something in there to expand these areas to help that connectivity between the two sides. The Corps of Engineers has no jurisdiction in any of that? It, it's really a city decision at this point. The Corps was involved in setting up the procedures for the bathtub. They looked at it over the years, but we've been involved in working in this area going back to the mid-1980s and have done some development in it. And we've actually been the ones, the firm that has really mapped the area for FEMA in the past have worked with the Corps of Engineers on permitting in this area. So, so the Corps, would, you wouldn't require, no Corps permission would be required? No Corps permission would be required as long as you did not fill any wetland areas. Now, we have also delineated a lot of the areas in this spot for wetlands. So you can fill areas where there are no wetlands and we know where those are at this time too, so. <coughs> Sure. The, the final thing I'd say about the characters is the site or the makeup of the owners is compatible with flexibility, particularly with the property that is wetlands and, and uh, floodplain area. And that the Coleman family has has demonstrated their commitment to this community over the years of being contributors and helpers. And, and their word to me is, let us know what we can do to help as far as the amount of land that you want, how you want to work with it. And the spirit of that is about as open and as friendly as it can be relative to the other parcels. If I may just ask Ron to maybe close by the comments from the neighborhood and, and the support of the other <coughs> well, Like the other two sites, we have a strong support from our, our neighborhoods. Like the unit what we have the other Groups don't have at this point is the University District Development Corporation, which is a nonprofit development corporation and can be a partner with the tech board in, in uh, developing this and job training and identifying employees from the area that can work in the tech park. It could basically make the tech park uh, part of the neighborhood, so to speak, and we, we are available to do that. The other thing is while the, the proximity to UALR connects to the researchers and is convenient for them, it also is it within the, the umbrella or the zone of the UALR uh, Public Safety Department. We don't have any agreements with them that they would patrol it, but they are already patrolling the apartments and the track and field complex. And also the broadband fiber stubs up in the track and field complex and I'm told there's more capacity stuck out there than this tech park will ever use. 
So those are added. Then. Depends on the camp clients. Well, I'm told you, you bring any clients you want to, it'll fit uh, in that broadband network. So, so there are benefits beyond, I mean, the, the most important is the access to the researchers. But there are benefits other than that being uh, located. Okay, questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, and I like the idea of uh, protecting wetlands. Just one question. Has the bathtub overflowed recently? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our better question, when was the last time the bathtub overflowed? Yeah. Yeah. A flooding is something that you would have to be very concerned about. And you would have to make sure that in these areas where we fail that you are up well above the 100-year floodplain. And, and we actually recommend the 500-year floodplain because to avoid that. So, I mean, it, it is something that is an issue here, sir. Thanks. And one thing just to keep in mind as you deal with wetlands and floodplains, you've got two different agencies. You mentioned the Corps of Engineers, and then she correct me from Corps of Engineers regulates wetlands, allows you to permit for filling wetlands. Adjusting floodplains and floodway lines, that's FEMA. Two different agencies there, two different types of permits. Okay. Okay. Other questions from board members? Hank, what do you think? What do you think the cost is? We have no cost estimates on this plan. Well, I think uh, sooner or later we've got to have some. Well, I think the reasonable I think feedback we, on that. Have, we have submitted some numbers relative to the cost of the shopping center. Yeah. Relative to the cost of the track and south of that, uh, we we have told you that the Coleman has suggested that for ten thousand dollars an acre, you can have all or as little as you want. Oh, right. um, that averages out pretty good when you get there. I think the good old days factory has been promoted in a range that we've promoted to you uh, in the in the neighborhood of. 1.25 to $2 million. So it's there's, up that range, there's right? some tightening that probably yeah. needs to, to go, but no one's gonna no one's gonna basically say, here's my price and take care of how long you want to decide no, whether you want to buy that. No, I understand and that. And so if you add those numbers together, I think you'd see if, if you really were trying to bring in part of the wetlands area, your average cost is gonna come way down because of that ten thousand dollars per acre. On the other side, when you buy a corner. At, at Asher University, which has one of the highest traffic counts in the yeah. state, you're going to pay more for that. Yeah. And, and but I can tell you that the, the price for an improved property, where if you were if you were able to utilize the rent revenue on the south half of the property when you weren't using it, that will carry itself. That will pay for itself if you're financing in, internally or externally. Okay. And, and so uh, I'd be happy to work through your real estate consultants okay. to get a specific number that we think it can be bought for. Yeah, we understand it cannot be specific, exact, because we're not, we're not in a position to deal with each of these owners one by one, but some ballpark figure anyway that we can make some comparisons. Okay. So, so we're asking them to come back with the ballpark? Yeah. I think we need that. Yes, we need a ballpark, and then we'll get specific later, but that'd be great if we could get a ballpark yeah. relatively soon. Yeah, on, on both halves, both the east and the west okay. side. Okay. We'll do that. Thank you. Roughly. Okay. We appreciate your time. Yeah, the, uh, I, I'm aware the floodplain piece on the Coleman property is not going to be very expensive. That's a question of buying however much of it can get for aesthetics. Uh, but it has nothing to do with the price of the property. But, but we want to include every little bit, oh, yeah. including the three acres, Coleman. Every if, if you'll help define where you want that to start and stop, sure. as far as the dimension. Then I think that what we're talking about is what you've got what laid you out over it? there, okay. plus the, the, three acres. the three and a half acres from where they are. Uh, and uh, what's the problem? So then can we, can, we can fill in with whatever wetlands. Well, I, I think this would be important. Um, it, it was, it was talking about the possibility of using the fill for, for an additional 10 acres. And, and there, I, I took it from his presentation that there are specific spots where that would work. Are those, is that specific spot contiguous to what yes. we're already developing? Yes. Okay. yes, yes, yes. So then the 10,000 per acre yeah. would, would make yeah. sense to at least have that in there. Right, right. Well. Thank yeah, you. You, okay. you want to buy that. Piece. Whether you do it right now or not, you want to buy that. Right? Okay. Okay. Can we hear from uh, the uh, Barrow Road property? Site number 13. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's all yours. Hello. Hey, look. Hey, Pam Brown. 
Courtney ever present the uh, John Darrow site and uh, I'd like to leave some time for Captain Gedrick, my engineer, and uh, probably from New York. And then Doris Wright, uh, <coughs> Vice Mayor Doris Wright from the Forest Green Club, that uh, board, I'd like for her to have some time to speak also. Um, first of all, I also would like to oh, hold on. She's speaking right now. If you could hold it down. Thanks. So the board could hear her. Thank you. I first of all would like to say um, I'd like to congratulate the uh, um, engineers on their layout. I think they did a really good job in the information in which they provided us with. I'd also like to say um, I am very, very excited about the technology part. And of course, I think John Barry is the best site for the park. But I definitely want everybody in the city to know, especially the board, who has worked extremely hard on it, that I am excited to see the Tate Park come to the rock. With that being said, I wanted to, because we are so excited about the Tate Park, I decided to show my support to the board uh, and um, do some, uh, gather some information on my own to see if the John Barrett site indeed was a good site for the technology part. I personally think it is, but I'd rather have professionals who do this for a living to tell me that it's a good site. So I hired uh, my own consultant to come in and let me know if what I was proposing to the city was good for our city. Because if it's not good for our city, I, I was going to withdraw my application. I'm glad to know that he thought that it was. Uh, I'd like to share with the board um, the information that I have up on the site. Uh, looking at the toll report, the biggest concern that they had is that they did not think that the site would support the amount of square footage that they were asking. Well, it will support that. It, uh, we have a layout that will allow us to reach the amount of square footage that the board would like to have. We also have a layout that allow you to go in stages, uh, whatever stages that meets the board, uh, what's best for the city. Um, also, uh, on the layout, uh, one of the things that the uh, engineers uh, looked at that they thought was really good was changing the entry level. If you can see where you come in on John Barrow, uh, you come in, the other uh, site has coming in on the corner. Right now on this particular site, we have you coming in directly across the street from the library, if you can see that. We got that made for a much better entryway. One of the other issues we had is, um, again, the, the only thing that we saw in the, in the report that was a concern to us was um, Again, we thought the report was good, very favorable for us. But will we be able to achieve what the amount of square footage that the board wants? And the answer to that question is yes. And I have Pat McGettrick, my engineer, here to give you some information on how we can achieve that and uh, give the board exactly what they're looking for. Pat, please. In the report by Craft uh, and Cole, they uh, had questioned whether or not uh, the site could handle the square footage. Uh, under the City of Little Rock zoning ordinance for, for this site, we can go up to a maximum of 60 feet. Uh, we may have to set back the buildings a little bit from the property line to, to achieve this. Uh, in doing so, uh, we can, with six to eight buildings, uh, reach the million square feet that's required. We can also, by this layout and the fact that we're not required any demolition or anything else, can easily phase this over a time period that would be uh, in line with the development of the site and the requirements of uh, the Technology Center. Uh, we also have, as of right now, a, a lake shown in the middle for a feature that would give you a more like a campus type facility uh, with the roadway around inside and the development of the lake to make sure that it's a, a quiet tree line uh, 
area for the development. Um, other than that, I did not see anything in the report by Craft and Co. that would uh, be any detriment to this site as a site for the technology part. Again, one of the things that I always like to stress <coughs> is that it is a it's one parcel, one owner, and one owner that wants to work with the city. So you're looking at one parcel in a great location, in a great neighborhood that has the support of the neighborhood, and um, one owner that wants to work with the city. I'd also like to give Doris Wright advice, Mayor Doris Wright, a chance to speak. She's worked really hard, and this is her award, and she has worked really hard for years before this had even started. So I would like for her to be able to come forth and give her remarks, please. Thank you so much, Mr. Bowman. I have something to come to the board of the Tech Park Board of the Board 6 Transformation Plan. Uh, one hard uh, copy of the original documents, and these are clip versions. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as stated, I'm uh, Vice Mayor Doris Wright. Uh, ward 6 is my ward that I represent as the elected, re elected representative. And in a prior um, appearance before this body, I was asked about plans that the city had for the area and the surrounding areas regarding redevelopment and uh, revitalization and things like that. And I wanted to come here today to share with you uh, what's been entitled the Ward 6 Transformation Plan. It is a comprehensive document that uh, covers many years. Uh, it includes studies that go back to 1994 and all the way up to uh, 2012. It's a comprehensive vision. It includes an analysis of all 23 neighborhoods within Ward 6, and it details the, the strengths, weaknesses, and concerns that uh, we have and how they are being addressed. The second document that I have provided uh, the, the board with is a John Barrow Improvement Plan because the analysis determined that the uh, Barrel area and that corridor, Barrel Road, uh, needed to be revitalized because it was economically stagnant. Hence my support wholeheartedly for the Technology Park Board, because we've envisioned that corridor becoming a medical hub with that uh, pivoting off of Canis Road, which is where all of the medical practices have located today, but that area is at critical mass, and we feel that it is now time, and it is beginning to happen, that the uh, development flow down barrel, and our goal is to create a design overlay district where we encourage medical office facilities. We have two that are uh, beginning right now. If you turn in your plan to the streetscape, that is in there. It is in no, the, the ground. Yeah, and we have it over here too. I want you to see up front of the center. You'll have to look at the board then. Okay. I think Dr. Good has, somebody has the bigger, oh, it's over there. Anyway, um, we mentioned the Tech Park on here, but as I stated, Little Rock will be the better for the Tech Park wherever it's located, and I am in full support of the Technology Park. I am, of course, more in support of it being on Barrow Road because it fits in with our redevelopment plans. But we have looked at um, this corridor, and it has 50,000 cars a day. That's a lot of traffic. And we are looking at a streetscape for this that will be traffic calming in nature that will allow the expansion that's going to be going on at the McMath branch. It's planned and slated for 3,000 square foot additions. We have a new medical dialysis clinic going in at the old United Medical Building. We have a new medical clinic and dialysis center going in behind the church's chicken. And we are building our community center at the opposite end of uh, Barrel Road uh, with Barrel and uh, Colonel Lynn. These developments are underway. The technology park would also be a key stimulant in that area. But either way, we will continue to develop this corridor. And I just want to make sure that you are aware of what we are doing. And not only the Barrel Corridor, but we have development 
on 36th Street, there will be a senior housing development that makes for a walkable community for seniors. We have a development around Union Park that will recapture the history of the area and develop a museum to capture the history of this neighborhood. Uh, the ULR student did her research thesis on the Barrow community, and she entitled it An Area Without History. Well, you and I know every area has a history. It just has to be discovered. So we have done that, and the neighborhood has done that, and that will be developed into that cabin. It, uh, that dates back to 1936. It was developed by the Civilian Conservation Corps under the WPA, the Works Progress Administration under the Roosevelt era. And we want to uh, commemorate that activity that took place there. And uh, we will have townhomes around that with the park as a centerpiece. And this will be for affordable housing for young families. Uh, we have area schools. We have everything that young families would need. There will be a transportation in the area for them, local schools, uh, grocery stores, everything that they would need to uh, feel empowered and in a place that's a real sense of community. And the jewel in my crown <coughs> is our West Central Community Center. Uh, it will be a $6 million facility that includes a pool, a uh, splash pad for the kids, revitalization of our baseball parks, and it is uh, all due to the generosity of the Rosedale Optimist Club who donated that property to the city of Little Rock. Um, this is a major improvement that is long overdue. I'm just going to share that with you as uh, you go and deliberate on which site is the best site. There is affordable housing in the area. There is high-end housing in the area. It is a residential area in nature. However, it is on a busy uh, arterial that flows through the city of Little Rock. So I do believe this is a good site uh, from the analysis that I've done of the other two sites based upon information that's been presented. It's the best site. Um, your uh, acquisition and uh, potential for development there is, seems to be better. However, that decision is up to you as a body. I do not envy you that decision. <laughs> uh, I certainly hope you will select uh, the Barrel Road site, but whichever site you select, you will still have my support. Thank you very much. Do you have questions for us? I have some questions for us. I would like to make uh, I would like to make one comment. The the uh, consultant that you hired was excellent. The, I don't know how many of you on the board read that report, but it's really well done. And on page three and four of that report, it has the best description of what a research park is that I've seen in a condensed form. I suggest we all read that. <laughs> and he actually is a guy who helped develop the. Uh, in fact, I guess he's. Uh, uh, still, uh, he's running the, the Richmond Park, I think. Yes. I think that's right. Yeah. Well, thank you for the report. We'll use that regardless. <laughs> and any questions from the board? Questions from the board. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Courtney, I, I'll tell you, I, I just want to congratulate you on uh, really a magnificent piece of property. Uh, it's a very strong piece of property and, and uh, really a hidden treasure. Uh, I was uh, out on the day I viewed this, and, and uh, you know, it, it sets up beautifully. It really does. It, 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 so have that hollow there, and, and the beautiful little pond, little lake there, and, and, it, and the way this, this rendering sets up is, I mean, I can, in my mind's eye, I can just see this, you know, there. Um, the, um, I guess the aggravating thing about it is, is you know, how, how do you, how do we mirror this with the criteria we're trying to we're trying to, to move forward with regard to proximity and, and some of these institutions that, that, that we know successful uh, tech parks um, uh, have had to have and and, and uh, uh, what, what are your what's your what's your reaction <laughs> I guess when I say that I can't pick this property up and move it where I'd like to have it okay <laughs> well. I I don't think it needs to be moved. I just don't think it needs to be moved. Baptist Hospital is less than a minute away. Um, the medical corridors are um, less than um, two minutes away. I mean, I think, again, Baptist Hospital is one of the, the state's largest hospitals, if not the largest. And it's less than two minutes away. So, I mean, you basically need, from my property to Baptist, can you imagine 
if they look at that property and say hey, it's a great piece of property, but not right here for this location, we wouldn't have Baptist Hospital. So I, I think it's a great piece of property. I think the location is great. I think the time is perfect for it. I think the developments that are going on in the city uh, are conducive to what we need there. Everything you need to develop that piece of property and to make it a wonderful tech park is available. You, you, you will not do your homework and find it that you will come up with something that says, well, we really need this over here. It's not that you won't come up with it. All the pieces are there. What we don't know is, is Little Rock, is Arkansas willing to say, um, this may not be where we have developed in the past. This may not be where we have developed in the past. This may be a site that we have overlooked. This may be an area that we have overlooked. But because we have overlooked it, does that mean that it still does not qualify to be what we know it can be? It has the same deal, it, in my opinion, it has the same ability as downtown. I think downtown, I, um, I have to say, because I'm born and raised here and I'm 50 plus, so it is a tremendous site. No. I, oh, yeah. Downtown no. is tremendous. I love it. And I will not stand here and say anything other than that. But I think it's tremendous because someone had a vision. Someone had a vision, someone believed in it, and somebody said, okay, we can make this work. We can make this happen. And John Gurr is no different. The land is no different. It would be different if you're in the middle of somewhere, if you're in the middle of somewhere, and we don't have a bus system, we don't have, uh, we're not close to anything. Then we got to kind of envision how we're going to make this work. Is this, how long will it take for it to catch up? How long will it take? Build it. They'll come. Build it. Trust me, you can walk from the site to Baptist Hospital. It, it, I understand your concern. I lived in this town, so I understand exactly what you're dealing with. But I guarantee you, it is a durable site and a great piece of property for the technology park. Okay, yes, question, Jacob. CJ? Commander, is that a pond or is it a lake? And is that runoff water or is it a real... Is, does, it ever, does it ever dry up? Uh... Yes, it, it, uh, right now it isn't being maintained as a pond. It's not a lake, it's really a pond. Uh, a big pond, but a pond. Uh, it is from the runoff. There's two channels that feed that, and uh, uh, if it is developed out, it can be made into a permanent water that won't dry up. It, uh, it's uh, in pretty good shape as far as that's concerned. So, so in short, yes. we can make it as beautiful as we need to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Other questions from the board? Any issues? At any moment, this is your opportunity. Thank you very much. We appreciate really appreciate it. it. Thank okay. you very much. All right. Uh, I guess at this point, uh, what we need to do as a board, we're pushing 5 o'clock. But uh, we'll open up here for a few public comments in just a minute. But I do, I also do need to make one other um, announcement that I did not make up front and I should have, and that is that we did receive a petition uh, from the uh, Forest Hills group, which uh, was an area that we had, uh, as you remember, taken off the table for consideration, and we asked them to submit it to the city, which they did. Uh, and uh, I have had nothing back from the city or from them. So all I want to do here is to acknowledge that we received it. We have no plans to pursue it at this moment in time. Uh, with respect to uh, what, this, what the board wants to do at, at this stage of the game, um, sooner or later we're going to have to make a decision. Either one of these we decide that we can make work and is the best of what we have, or we're going to have to say that these don't work and either just shelve the idea for a while or try to go back and look at other sites. I'm not very excited about that last one because we had 23 sites already that were submitted and if there's anybody else in the, in the city that has an idea, we're still open to that, but nobody has come forward with any that I'm aware of. So I think that uh, what I would like to suggest, and I'd like the board's response, and what you all would like to do, um, at the next meeting, which is the March meeting, uh, I would suggest that all of us think about all of this material we have, um, decide whether or not that one of these sites is something that we're going to pursue 
and then we'll do the rest of the details that has to be done up. Clearly, all of them will have to do some more. But the point is, there's not much point in doing that on all of them at this point, because essentially the questions are the same. Uh, so, um, what is your all's pleasure? Well, I think there needs to be a conversation about all three then. If we're going to wait until next month, and we're going to come back and we're going to vote on one, that means that we're missing a conversation between now and then on how we came up with our logic for one. No question. Uh, all three of these sites are impressive for, for, me, you know, for different reasons. So at this point, if someone was to ask me what would I would vote on, there's still not enough information. I would say, one, I would love to hear ULR and UMS comment on the three sites. Okay, we can get that. Two, I'd love to hear these incubators that at BioVentures comment on whether or not they would move in any one of these three sites, or at least help the public fully understand the nature of what takes place in these incubators. So that when we talk about jobs and we talk about opportunities for a community, the community knows as much as we do. And I'm not certain that I know anything at all. So those two points, ULR and UMS commenting and the BioVentures groups commenting would be helpful. And then uh, I don't know if I could make a decision without hearing more about money. You know, so, so Hank's going to go back and gather some information about the university site. That's great. Pamela has provided her information before and is negotiable uh, and willing to negotiate. And then downtown has a, a rough and ready right. amount. I just think we need to firm that up before we make a decision. And then what was my, my fourth point going to be? My fourth point is I'm stuck on, and I don't want to make anybody upset, but if private investment suddenly rose up and said, we want to participate, I think that we could get a leg up on making this site successful by making sure we had private investment a part of it. And how you do that and how, you, how, how that's articulated, I don't know. That's another conversation. But the citizens of Little Rock are putting up a lot of public dollars. And I think that if we don't try to, to get private investment involved in this, we'd be doing the citizens a disservice. And that's just my personal opinion. In fact, I like the motion that that, that private investment be a consideration in the criteria for... for uh, Location. So if any of these sites came forward with private investors, a pharma company, anything that said, hey, look, we'll help you develop this and reduce your costs, that should be a consideration. Those are my comments. And Let me ask the, let me ask sure. the question. CJ, I, I don't disagree with what you said. The only question I have is whether or not you can uh, discuss a private investor unless he knows where it's going. Right. Uh, it, it, you know what I'm saying. We got a chicken and an egg problem on our hands, uh, and so I, I'm not sure. What is your all thought? Uh, I think if you, we, we clearly are going to have to have private investment and get out there and get some people who are interested in investment uh, in this sort of a long-term investment. But I don't know how you talk to somebody if I don't know where <coughs> I'm going to put it. Because my guess is the people who'd be willing to invest downtown are not the same as those that would invest on Asher or necessarily right. those who would invest on Barrow Road. So I think the board's going to probably have to make a decision on a site and then decide you're going to make that site work, which includes going after private investment. Yeah, it wouldn't what's, be your all's, what's your all's feeling about that? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be your sole consideration. No, no, no. I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm not suggesting that. Yeah. I just don't want to leave it out of the yeah, conversation. No, it, it won't get out. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how. And maybe we um, ask our consultant this. Maybe we turn that equation around and ask the consultant to to give us his impression of barriers to private investment for each of these three sites. Ah, uh, it's an interesting idea. So that we have an idea from, because he represents one of them, in fact one of the largest there is in the country, then we have an idea from, 
from that perspective, if it's a barrier that can be overcome or a barrier that he, he doesn't think can be resolved. And, and I, don't, I, I like you believe that the private investment side of this is going to be driven, um, while we would love to have it driven by people within the community and the region and the state, in the end, it might be more driven by folks from outside of this state, and so I'd like to have that perspective. Yeah, could be. Right. Tom, comments? Uh, well, what is your all suggestion? I uh, I could put on the table. Uh, Mike Douglas had meant to look at his companies that are coming up through the incubator and have an opportunity to uh, look at the potential for some of them moving in the, we're talking two years away at the best. So, you know, what's coming up, what the pipeline looks like, who's gonna be willing. But unfortunately, he got involved in his retirement and his new assignment down in Texas, and he did not get that done. But we can get that done. Yeah, we can get that done. And Tom, if you could work with Marie and see if we couldn't get a, a discussion, maybe have a discussion uh, with her beforehand and see what she thinks about what she might be able to present. And I can get Jeff Stenson to do the same for the ULR ones. Uh, and uh, we can go from there. And like I say, I think it really would be instructive to have the folks from the Tech Park in Fayetteville come down and give you a little bit of their history and how, how uh, successful they have been. Because they are really doing extraordinarily well right now. Could you frame your initial uh, motion in the form of motion again? I can do that. I would move that, um, that uh, the meeting in March, that we, that we all of us think about what it is that we want to do. Uh, and, um, and, that, and that we have two, at least two presentations, or three presentations. One is comments and examples from the uh, incubator at the Med Center, and the same from the incubator at ULR. And then have a presentation from the person who runs the uh, tech park in Fayetteville because he's been there a long time and he's had a lot of experience and the early stages of it were not pretty. Can, can I make one? <laughs> but one, it is now. Can I make one addition sure. to the UAMS BioVentures piece? And, okay. and Tom, I think what would also be helpful is a conversation from one of those companies that couldn't stay here and why it was they couldn't and, and if this would have resolved that issue or if it's something else. And, and I know there's been a number that have left to go elsewhere for various reasons, but if we could get that information as well, that would be very helpful in the creation of this. Right. That's true. Uh, and I think uh, what, what we can do is the, the issue that hopefully that would address is this comment about uh, where would these companies like to go? Okay, and see what they say. Uh, and what we might do is talk to a couple of the companies, Tom, if we could get them to do it, who have matured and gone out already. Uh, we've got one or two of those, and it'd be interesting to ask them if it had been available, would they have preferred to go in the park, and would that have been helpful? Uh, because uh, uh, I think that's, and if we do that and uh, get some feedback from them on these sites, this might be helpful. Uh, and also the, uh, the, the fellow from Fayetteville can talk to us about that one. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly where it is. I think it's out where the uh, Engineering Research Center is. But uh, it's south. It's south, is it not? Yeah. Isn't it just south? But it's out there in that same track where the research center is for the engineering college. Yeah. Right. That's my understanding. In fact, I think it's actually attached to that. I think it's actually part of the engineering, well, it's not part of it, but it's adjacent to the engineering research facility that's out there on Highway 71. Right. That's where I think it is. Right. Um, which has been there a while. Uh, so, can we have a second for that? Or a second. Uh, and, 
You may have to restate it. Yeah, okay, well, well, we'll get it in a minute. So we'll have to be. Okay. <laughs> One way or another. <laughs> the main thing is be able to move on here. Uh, next, I think that uh, then we need to, uh, to uh, the other thing is to get as, as, as good a handle on rough ballpark costs as we can and have those available for the next meeting as part of the discussion. Uh, and then the board's going to have to just bite the bullet and, and have a discussion about each of those three sites and which one we think has the best chance. Because the, in the end, what we want is to pick the site that we believe has the best chance of success in building these new companies. That's what we really want. And uh, that does include in, you know, being attractive to private folks that will come in and join. Does that mean at the end of the day that we potentially pick no site? We could end up saying that we do not believe we can make any one of these three sites successful. That's the question. Will we know if ULR and UMS disagrees with our decision? I mean, oh, we'll have we'll have their input. That's the, well, that we can do. I, I can only give you I, I can give you the input that I have had a long conversation with Dr. Ron and also with uh, Dr. Anderson, and both of them their point is they are they are enthusiastic about the project and they will support it wherever we put it. They, do, they leave it to our best judgment to pick the best site we think we can make successful. And once we do that, both of them are going to be very supportive. That's what you're going to get back from them. So I'm sort of a, you know, a grassroots person. So if we, was, if we pick the site over here on university, UMS is okay with that. That's what I'm hearing. That's, yeah, I mean, it, I, the, the main thing with that site was that if we were to pick that site, we didn't want the med center not to believe it, that it was their site as well. You, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, but he, but he was perfectly fine with that. And if we picked their old road, both UMS and... Uh, here's what I'm hearing, that they don't care what we select, that they're okay with the three sites. We just need to make and a they decision. They have not said they're okay with all sites. That's not what they have said. I, I, that's why I keep asking if I can hear for myself as a board member what their position is publicly. Um, and I think what you're going to get back from them is that they appointed these people to this board and they expect us to make a decision. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. I mean, Great. I'm sorry, CJ, but it's the buck stops here. There's no way to unload oh, it. Oh, I don't mind I've the buck stopping. I don't mind the buck stopping here. That's, like that's, I said, I've been trying to unload it somewhere, but I haven't been successful. Okay. <laughs> While we have the the engineering firm here, and, and maybe FTN also still in the room, is there is there a, uh, a thumbnail idea to do a comprehensive environmental and engineering review That's a good question. on any of these three sites, the number that we can expect. Jerry? To do, to do a complete environmental study yeah. and, and engineering similar to what we did on the other sites before? Um, it would be similar to, to you know, the fees that, that we looked at the other, uh, the other sites. Um, you know, one possible just suggestion <coughs> As you, as you try to make this decision, it's a tough decision. Obviously, we're giving you analytical information. One thing that we've done in the past is we've, we've created a matrix, and we've done site selection before, we'll create a matrix of different criteria that you're looking for. Whether it's, you know, what are the environmental aspects, what is the close proximity to the institutions, what is the cost to develop the site, all these different things. And you, you put a ranking on that matrix. Okay. You almost okay. hide. In other words, is it more important that you're closer to the institutions? We'll give it a higher ranking. Is it more important that it's a green foot site where I'm taking out residences like the John Barrel site? You can give it a ranking, uh, a number. And then, you know, I'm an engineer, so I'm an local guy. And then we end up going through and, and ranking it and, and, and saying, well, this out of one out of 10, this is a 10. This is a 2. This is and each one of those different rankings has a different level because it's more important to you than other things. And then at the end of that matrix, you get a score, and you score the size. When you say environmental, what, what would be included in that? Uh, environmental, 
Phase one. Phase one. You can do a phase Anything one. Anything beyond that? I don't know that I would do much more than a phase one at this point. Yeah. Even if we have the potential of brown fields and two of the three sites? Once you get into the phase two, and Dennis does does that for a living, that's what his company does in environmental studies. It's, it's a lot more expensive. Well, and, and that's my point. I think yeah, yeah. I think we need to understand this isn't a ten thousand dollar engineering. Right. Phase one is just a quick first blush. Um, it's just you know, hey, it's an industrial site. You've got problems there. Uh, it's a it's a you know, the site in the field. You probably not have problems. When you get into the phase two is when you actually go out there and do testing and things like that, monitoring. Very expensive to do that kind of stuff. When you put a number on very expensive. I'm going to refer to Dennis to be honest with you. That's what his company does. That's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> it, it, it really depends. Excuse me. But a phase one is, is probably going to cost you, you know, say the order of $5,000. It really depends upon the size. A small piece of property. We do them for two or three thousand dollars. You start getting to a larger piece of property, they start getting up to ten thousand dollars. I mean, you really have to do a phase one on any of these pieces of property, Correct. whether it's John Barrow, or whatever it yeah, is, right. to do it to identify what your potential problems are. You know also that the sites with brownfields that have buildings on them probably have asbestos problems and let paint problems that are going to have to be dealt with, which will add to the cost of, of the construction. Associated with that, though, there is brownfield grant money available. Mm -hmm. and, and there is quite a bit. There's some available both from the state mm -hmm. and, and from Pulaski County that could be used at, at really any of these sites. For the mitigation or, or the testing? Uh, for both. Okay. I mean, it, you could get a phase one done with that. And I'm sorry, Jean Kenninger has left here, but she knows that. But there is money available to do a phase one and to follow up with phase two. So that funding is available out there to public entities. And, and both the downtown side and the side out here in Asher would fall into that category. Okay, but just for discussion purposes, and, and you might not have to go beyond phase one on the barrel site. The other two sites likely we would. Um, and, and assuming a, a ten thousand dollar expense on phase one for the other for all three sites, we'll just leave it at that. Then go to phase two for two of the three, are we talking about 50,000? Are we talking about 150,000? You're probably talking something in, in the $50,000 area because I think when you look downtown, you, you go back in the phase one, you look at the history, you see what's been down and everything else, you're probably gonna have to be some soil sampling, looking at some of that, you're gonna have to deal with the buildings and everything. So, you know, that $50,000 is probably a ballpark figure. So it, whether it's Asher and University or that basically would be somewhere close to the same. Okay, that, that would be correct. All right, I, I just want us to have an idea of what that next, there's a lot more work to be done. Yeah. Yes, sir before a decision can be made. That's that's my point. Yeah, Thank you. It does. Right. Okay, guys, any other suggestions? Um, are we are we okay with a, with a March meeting? What gets us closer to where we want to be? Please. And the expectation is that the, the outcome of the March meeting will be uh, to identify which or multiple sites will, will enter into this process, right? Okay. Right. Right. And uh, and like I say, if you all are agreeable, I will contact the fellow who runs the park in Fayetteville because I think it's a good example. It's it's close to home, and uh, they have the same problems trying to make theirs work we do. Uh, it, it would be the closest example of what has to happen to make these things successful that we have certainly close by. And after all, they have to deal with the Arkansas legislature and everybody else things we do, so it'd be at least a comparable uh, situation. Okay, I know him. He, he, I think he'll be pleased to come. Any other issues from the board members? Uh, it is now 5:30. Uh, for those of you who had comments that you wanted to make, could we ask you to simply send them to us, and we'll circulate them to all the board members because it's getting pretty late. Because we're now down to the point where we're, we're not so much in getting information from all of you. We've essentially got a lot of that at this point. We now have to wrestle with how we're going to make a decision. So we're going to have to spend most of our time at these board meetings with the board itself working on this issue. Okay? Uh, any last minute issues or whatever? If not, we're going to adjust. <coughs>